So this is the solution video for the chapter two practice test that's in your pre-calculus workbooks. And uh, number one asks us to determine if each of the following shows a function and to explain why. Okay, so make sure that that explanation is there. The first set of points we can see has uh, an A for every Y value. But for it to be a function, all x values have to be different. All right, doesn't matter what the y values are. So if I look at the x values, 2, 3, and 4, yes, this is a function. And it's because all x values are different. Okay, each x value goes to a y value. In part B, if I look at just the x value, the one is repeated, um, is there more than once, so it goes to multiple y values. If I were to graph this, I would, uh, it would not pass the vertical line test, so this is not a function. And that's because the x value goes to more than one y value. Part C, uh, if I were to solve this for y, I would do the cubed root of both sides and y would equal the cubed root of x plus two. And if I think of the graph of this, and we were actually just looking at cube root, cube root graphs, and it kind of looks like a chair that's been turned over on its side. Okay, so this is a function. Oops, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, function. And it is a function because I, I can look at the graph it passes the vertical line test. If I have a fourth power or any even power of y, when I take the fourth root of this, and you can do this on Desmos where you take the fourth root of x minus three, your graph will look something like this. And if you look at this graph, it would not pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. And it doesn't pass the vertical line test. All right. Part two says to graph draw any graph that's not a function and explain why. Okay, so you can draw any graph that you like. Here's a graph, and if I were to try to do the vertical line test, it would hit the graph in two spots. Vertical line intersects the graph in more than one spot. Okay, so you could have drawn anything. You could draw a circle, um, you can draw an absolute value sign or graph that's kind of on its side, but Anything that you can draw a vertical line through it and it touches in more than one spot. Number three says to state the domain of each function. And if we remember our rules, um, most of the time our graphs are all real numbers, except for when I see a variable on the denominator, like in part B. 
or a variable inside the square root, like in part C. Otherwise, my domain for part A is all real numbers. In part B, this x we know cannot be 0 because we cannot divide by 0. So to properly state my domain, and I'm not going to mark you off for this, but you will probably see your domains written properly in a multiple choice test. So for all x, I can have any x except for x cannot equal 0. In part C, we know that inside the absolute or inside the square root symbol, it has to be a positive number. Generally, we can take the square root of 0, but because it's on the denominator of this fraction, we're also not going to be able to have it equal 0. So I know this value of x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. Okay, in this case, it cannot equal 0. So if I solve this inequality, x has to be greater than 2. And in my domain, I can have any x except for those x values have to be greater than 2. On part, part 4, we have two functions. We have an f function and we have a g function. And it's asking us to calculate each of the following. So part a asks us to multiply them together. So I have 3x plus 1. And I'm going to multiply that by x. And all I need to do here to simplify is distribute. So I have 3x squared and then plus x. Part B asks us to add them together. So I'm going to take the f function and add it to the g function. The f function is 3x plus 1, and I'm going to add it to x. And here I'm going to combine like terms. So that gives me 4x plus 1. Part C says to add the f and g functions together and then plug in 3 for x. Well, I already found that f of, sorry, I'm going to write that again, f plus g equals 4x plus 1. So if I plug in 3 where I see an x, I have 4 times 3 plus 1 is 13. All right, so on number five, this was the image that didn't get printed into your workbook. So if you take time to um, just kind of draw it in here, um, but we're going to look at all of these questions based on this graph. So part A asks us to find the value of the function if x is four. So if I look at 4 on the x-axis, here I see it on the x-axis. So the y value in this case is going to be 0. If f is negative 3, if I go over here and x is negative 3, I go up to the graph, and this is at 1. So the value of... The function when x is negative 3 is 1. Is f of 1 positive or negative? So if I look at the x value of 1, I go below the x-axis to find the y value. So this would be negative. Then it says for what values of x is f of x equal 0? Now remember f of x is the y values. So if I look at my graph, the y values that are greater than 0, oops, equal 0, sorry, are the x-intercepts. So if y is 0, I have two of them. So 
the x values that make y 0 are 4 and 0. For what values of x is the y values less than 0? Here I'm going to look for below the x-axis and it would be this little section right in here. And if I write this in interval notation, I'm starting at 0. 0 is not less than 0, but this is where this interval starts. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. I start at 0 and I go to 4. And I have parentheses because I don't include those points, but I include everything up to those points. The domain asks us what are the x values that are in this function. And I can look at the graph and I have x values. The leftmost value, the smallest one, is negative 5. And I go all the way up to positive 4. It includes negative 5 and it includes positive 4. So those are uh, surrounded by brackets. The range is the y values. So if I look at the lowest y value here is at negative 3. And the highest y value is 1. So I'm looking along the y axis and what y values do I have in my function. So again, the smallest y value is negative 3. And there's a closed dot there. And it goes up to 1. What are the x-intercepts? That's the same question as part D. So the x-intercepts are at 0 and 4. If you want to write those as points, that would be 0, 0 and 4, 0. I don't, um, I'm not picky in terms of how you write those. The y-intercepts is where it crosses the y-axis. And that happens at y equals 0 or at 0, 0. The local maximum. Um, this would be, in our domain, what would be the top of the hill? And since it doesn't have a vertex and a change of direction, um, we could say that this could be a local maximum and that value is 1. But it occurs at multiple places. So, um, but it is, it is a maximum in this value or in this graph. A local minimum would be the bottom of this hill, and the lowest value is negative 3. Number 6 asks us to determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. And it says to show your work to get full credit. So if it's going to be even, that means that um, f of x has to equal f of negative x. So if I put negative x into the equation and it equals what I have here, it's going to be even. So I'm going to try that. I have um, f of negative x equals negative 3 times negative x. I'm going to square that plus 6. Negative x times negative x is x squared. So this is still negative 3x squared plus 6. That does equal. So yes, this is an even function. If it's even, we know that it's not going to be odd. Okay, It can be one or the other. Um, but if it's going to be odd, it has to be reflected over the origin or symmetric. 
over the or origin. And that would mean f of x has to equal f of negative x, which we just showed right here. And it also means f of x has to be the opposite of f of x. And if I were to show the opposite of f of x, that means I'm going to multiply my function by negative 1. And if I take negative 1 and I multiply negative 3x squared plus 6, this would give me positive 3x squared and a minus 6, which is not the same as what we started with. So it is not odd. All right, so we have an even function. And thinking about this too, uh, towards the end of the unit, we started looking at graphs of these. And if I were to just do a quick graph of this, my vertex of this parabola is going to be at 0, 6. So let's say that's 6 right there. It's going to point down and it's going to be skinny. So it looks somewhat like this. And we can see that it flips over the y-axis or it's reflective over the y-axis. So that means it's even, right? And if I take this point here and go over the origin, um, I, I might get a point over here, but it is all of these points are not over the origin. So I know that it's not odd. Number seven, if I have a function 2x plus 1, Find the secant line that goes from x equals 0 to x equals 2. Now remember, the, to get a secant line, we have to have two points and a slope. So if these are the x-coordinates of my two points, 0 and 2, to find the y values that correspond to them, I'm going to plug them into the equation. So to find f of 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And now to find the slope that I'll use for my secant line, I'm going to subtract my y values. So I'm going to have 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. This is 4 over 2, which is 2. So the slope I'll use is 2, and I'll use one of these points over here. How about if I use the 0 and 1? And then if I start with y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, I have an x1, a y1, and my slope that I'll put in to the equation. So I have y minus 1 equals my slope, which is 2, times x minus 0. So on this side, I just have 2x, because when I distribute, then I get plus 0. And then I'm going to add the 1 over to this side. So I have 2x plus 1. This is the line that connects these two points. Part 8 says to describe the transformations that are occurring. Now remember, we always start thinking of a um, parent function. And because I have uh, x squared, this is going to be a quadratic equation. So it's going to look like a u. And because of the negative, that means I'm going to turn my u downward. And the 1 half is going to make my u fat or wide. 
So it's going to be wider than the parent function. In part B, a cubic function is a chair function. And here I am multiplying the negative, makes it flip. So the negative is being cubed, so it's going to point downward. So instead of going up from left to right, it's going to go down from left to right. So this is going to point down. And the 3 is going to make it very skinny. All right, so we skipped the section that has to do with piecewise functions. So I told you you could skip number nine, and that leaves us at number 10. And we're just sketching the following graphs. So part A, I know, is an absolute value function. It's going to be a V. My vertex is going to be at the opposite of the number in side with x, so it's going to be at positive 1, and the y-coordinate of the vertex is going to be at 3. So over 1, up 3 is my vertex. I still have a positive value up here, so my slope is going to be up 1 over 1, so it's going to look like this. And I'm going to go the same in the other direction. Part B is a chair function. Now, my parent function is going to look something like this. All right, so now I'm going to have a different center. I'm not going to have it at 0, 0. My center is going to be at negative 3 and negative 1. So if I go over to negative 3, down 1, my chair function would look something like that. Part C is quadratic because of the square. I need to find the new vertex. I have some shifts right, left, up, and down. So my vertex is going to be at positive 2, negative 2. Okay, so if I find 2, 2, whoops, 2, negative 2 is going to be down here. I know from the negative it's going to point down. And the 1 half is going to make it fat. So it's going to kind of go like this. Okay, and I'm not looking um, at this point in this lesson. I'm not looking for other points that shape the parabola. I just want to make sure that I made it fat and it's pointing down. The last one is a square root function. So the parent function of a square root, remember we start at 0, 0 and we kind of go up slowly. My new start is going to be at negative 3, and there's no number out here for the k value, so this is negative 3, 0. So I'm going to go to negative 3, up 0, here's my new starting point. And because of the negative, I'm going to flip it down. So it's going to go downward. So this is going to kind of go this way. And there we have it. So I think you're all set. If you have any questions, um, you can email me or you can ask next time in class.